The first mistake DIYers tend to make when working with Teflon tape is wrapping up the very end of the threads. If you wrap it like this and making sure that you're getting that end and then you start to work your way in, what happens is that end tends to cover up the opening. You can see right here, I've got the threads covered and what's happening is I've also covered the inside of the opening a little bit. So those can fold over like that, especially as I thread on the new piece. And then these also can stretch. Look at how flexible and stretchable these pieces are. And you can literally cover up the entire thing if you wanted to. But a lot of the times this stuff ends up getting inside your water flow. It ends up causing some issues and you just don't need to do that. Instead, we can just start at the first thread or a little bit after. I'm gonna hold this in place, start wrapping, and then you can see my first thread is exposed there and that's okay. We do not need to go way far towards the tip or the front of the fitting. This is gonna be sufficient. And with that, a little bit of follow through there. We can now thread this on and nothing's gonna get caught and cause any blockage over on this side. The second mistake DIYers tend to make is wrapping in the wrong direction. You may not think it matters that much, but you may have noticed I just wrapped clockwise as we're looking at the opening. If I take this and go the other way, I wrap this way, this starts to cause some issues. I'm gonna break this off, flatten it down, and then if we grab a fitting, let's say a cap here for example, and then start to thread this on right there. So right here, I'll move this so you can see it. I'll keep that right where it was. And then right here, this has started to bunch up and literally unwrap itself. If we were to keep going, it'll keep unwrapping. Yeah, it's just wrapping all the way around. It's grabbing a whole chunk of it. Like this much is already loose right here. It's just unwrapping the entire thing. Then if we take it off and take a peek, Look at that, there's actually no thread tape on the actual first couple of threads here because it's pushed it off as we went, basically making this void and pointless. That's why it's important that we always go in the same direction that the new fitting is going to be threaded, which is almost always going to be clockwise as you're facing the opening. So wrap it like that, pull it off, and then follow it through. Now, as I put the new piece on, the cap, it's gonna actually tighten it and grab as it goes. It's not going anywhere, here we go. So nothing came loose at all. This is still totally intact. And as we take this off, see it grabbed the tape and pulled it with it right underneath around those threads and on the inside here, which is exactly what it's supposed to be doing. The third mistake is using Teflon tape in areas where you just don't need to. For example, there are a lot of fittings that have a built-in sealant or a ring to create a watertight seal. As we look inside this one, for example, this is a water supply for a toilet. As you fit this onto its opposing fitting, the rubber inside here is gonna form a nice watertight seal, so you shouldn't need to use tape on here. Other examples are anything with PEX pipe. Anything with PEX just doesn't need any sort of Teflon tape. This is a totally different system. The tape is not there for sealing anything or for lubricating anything. Just avoid that altogether on PEX. Same with PVC fittings that aren't threaded. Anything where you have to glue the PVC together, no tape necessary there. And then some of the parts are a little bit trickier. So if we look at this guy right here, this is a little quarter turn valve, and you see it's got the little compression fitting ring right in here. That means that we ideally shouldn't need to use any Teflon tape on this either, since this is what's gonna be doing the sealing. It's not relying on the threads to actually form the seal, it's relying on the threads to create pressure on that fitting ring and to make sure nothing escapes through that. Same thing on this top piece here, if we open this up, We've got another compression fit ring or compression sleeve in there. And same idea there. The threads aren't there to seal all the water off. They're there to basically squeeze down or clamp down on that compression fitting to make sure it's a tight fit. That said, a lot of people will tell you, and I agree, a lot of times it really is okay to put a little extra Teflon tape on something, especially if you're not getting the seal or the watertight fit that you're expecting. So try it without tape in those circumstances. If you have an old ring, an O-ring for example in there, or a rubber seal ring in there, that's just not holding the seal well, ideally replace it. If that's not an option, try combining that seal ring with some Teflon tape, that may do the trick. So there are times when it's okay to, and it's probably better to err on the side of using it than not using it, but in certain cases, it's definitely not the way to go. And a part of that is putting too much on can actually cause the compression essentially, or the threads, to have too much pressure and they might crack or split the fitting. So you wanna avoid that as well. The fourth mistake is actually applying the tape incorrectly. Not just applying it in the wrong direction, but not putting sufficient pressure on there to get it to create a good seal and to hold against itself. This can be really frustrating if you've experienced this. Now you'll notice that what I'm typically doing is I use my dominant hand's index finger. I place a bit of the tape on the threads and hold it with my other hand. 
wrap it around, and what this does is I'm pinching this with my thumb, and that allows me to apply pressure as I wrap this around. I can kind of pull it, and after that first round, I don't need to hold it anymore. And then I can just pull that with whatever amount of tension or pressure I want, get that wrapped around, and it's gonna do a great job at holding on, and I can do this one-handed. Then when I'm ready, I usually like to hold it with the other hand real quick and hold it inside here, pull it, let it break, and that'll just snap off, and then follow through. Now with this, that's gonna be very easy to work with. I can thread anything I need to on there and it'll do a good job. What I see people doing a lot is actually holding it like this and then wrapping it around like this way. And then what tends to happen is you don't get the same pressure unless you're creating that yourself. If you wrap it around like this and you don't get it tight, then when you go to pull it off and thread it, you might have little bubbles in there, it might be loose, you might have done a sloppy job or crossed it over or overlapped it, anything like that. So the easiest way to apply this and to put that pressure again is just to use your index finger and remember you're kind of holding the back or the top of it against the threads. But I'm going to apply some right on top, put my finger in there and then start wrapping. And after that first wrap you should be able to let go and then finish the job. And that allows you to apply even pressure on it, give it a nice tight snug the whole time and that gets the Teflon tape right into those threads right where we need it. Snap it off, follow through and you're good. The fifth mistake I see DIYers making is not wrapping the tape around the threads enough times. I think there's a fear of overdoing it, and I understand that, but I always defer to Roger Wakefield on this. If you don't know Roger, he is kind of the master of YouTube plumbing, all things plumbing. He's been a professional plumber for many, many years, and if it's good enough for Roger, it's good enough for me. And he says, and then on this thin tape, I'm liable to go six or seven wraps. The reason being, it's thinner than normal. Six or seven times. So that works for me, and one of the reasons is, let's check out the actual manufacturer's directions on how to use this tape. What it says is, apply the thread seal tape a minimum of three wraps, using care to wrap in the direction of the thread rotation. Be sure to keep the tension on the tape while wrapping. Do not overlap the tape on the ends of the fitting. All things that we've covered here today. So, with that, we can go up to six or seven times, really. It just says at least three on there. So I'm gonna wrap this around once, twice, Three times a lady, four, five, six, got a great seal on there. I'm not worried about that at all. I can still see the individual threads on there. It's not like blanket wrapping them or anything like that. And then again, when I go to put a cap on here or another fitting, it's still got plenty of room to hold. And that's the interesting thing is the tape is sometimes misunderstood. Yes, it is a sealant, so it can be used to basically fill in any of those gaps that may exist between the threads, which shouldn't be there, but it'll help with that. But it's also a lubricant. And what that means is it's gonna make it easier for you to fit your fitting, the opposite fitting on, even further than you would be able to without the tape being used. So that's one of its main purposes. With that, it also makes it easier for it to not get stuck, and it makes it easier for it to slide off after the fact. So it's kind of a dual purpose sealant and lubricant, really just perfect for plumbing in general. The sixth and final mistake I see DIYers making is just relying on the Teflon tape itself, when sometimes that's not quite enough. Aside from getting a good fit and applying the tape, sometimes you need what's called pipe dope or thread sealant. So there's a few different options here. These are actually all from Rector Seal. That's one of the more popular brands, but there are other brands out there. So we've got some True Blue here, we've got some T plus two, and then we've got some T plus two in its own little small container where you can just squeeze it on there. Now these two come with the brush in the lid, which I really like. I've had this one for a long time and it still holds up really nicely. I occasionally have to mix it up a little bit. But as we watch, after we get the thread tape applied, then we can take some of this stuff and again, try to apply it in the same direction this stuff is pretty goopy at this point, in the same direction as the clockwise direction that we talked about before. Apply this on here like so. Oh, getting, getting drippy on me. And then you don't need a ton. I'm putting probably more on than I normally would. But once we seal that off and put this on, I feel really confident that this is a great seal and is not gonna leak in any way, shape, or form between the Teflon tape and the pipe dope. And then I would typically use my wrench to tighten that down all the way, not just by hand, but that is gonna be an excellent seal. Just a couple of bonus tips. When it comes to actually selecting the tape that you use, I found that you can usually use just about anything. Teflon is actually a brand. It's actually made by DuPont, and it's never been produced by DuPont as tape. It just means PTFE or polytetrafluorethylene, something you'll probably never need to know. So PTFE, Teflon, they're kind of used interchangeably like uh, facial tissues and Kleenex or search engines and Google and that sort of thing. Now, I actually go to Harbor Freight typically and purchase just a big old 10 pack like this. It costs next to nothing. 
You can get these rolls for maybe a dollar a piece if you buy them at the hardware store individually. And then there's Blue Monster you may want to check out. It actually looks more expensive, but it's almost the same price because you're getting almost four times as much. So it's four bucks for a roll instead of one buck for a roll, but you get nearly four times as much. So it's very comfortable in price and it's a little bit easier to apply in my opinion, a little bit thicker, definitely something worth checking out. Now that you know all you need to know about Teflon tape, it's time to learn about PEX plumbing for homeowners. This is something that every homeowner should know, especially if you're thinking about doing any future plumbing. This stuff is so handy, easy to work with, and just with a couple of tools, you can do a great job with it. So be sure to check out this video right here to learn all about using PEX as a homeowner. I'm Nils with Learn to DIY. Thanks for watching.